Hello everybody, this is Tim once again. Uh, I just got done watching Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Um, this is my VHS copy of the film. Uh, <laughs> I like to collect VHS tapes. Uh, I love this tagline, Michael lives and this time they're ready. <laughs> Makes no fucking sense because they're not ready at all in this movie. <laughs> I mean, they're not prepared for Michael Myers and whatsoever, so I don't know where the fuck this tagline came from. Uh, on the back here, you got uh, film stars Danielle Harris, uh, Don Pleasance, Ellie Cornell, uh, View Star, Wendy Kaplan, and Tamara Glenn, I believe is how you say her name. This film is directed by Dominic Othanen Gerard, I think how you pronounce his name. Uh, he's a horrible director. <laughs> this movie sucks. This is the worst film in the franchise I've seen thus far. Worse than Halloween 3. Uh, I'll give this film uh, one and a half stars of a possible four. This film is dog shit. It's shit. Um, I really don't see how any film after this one can be worse. This film is fucking atrocious. Uh, this is one of the worst. Uh, one. It goes in the category of one of the worst horror major franchise sequels. Horror major franchise sequels that I've seen. Uh, this film is just utter shit. You got um, the character Rachel back in this one, uh, played by Ellie Cornell again, and she's great. And she gets killed off just like in, just the beginning of the movie. I don't mind if, like her. I don't mind her character dying, but it more of it is more of an epic death, and she just gets killed so nonchalantly in the movie. Uh, she just gets Michael Myers stabs her with a pair of scissors. Bam, she's dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. In the movie, you got uh, Jamie back again, and this film fucking. Uh, <laughs> It completely re re rewrites the ending of the last film. Uh, instead of where Jamie stabbed her her mom, instead of her mom dying from it from the stab wound, she survived. So Jamie's in a clinic now. For some reason, can't speak. I don't know why. Stress or post traumatic or or something. I don't I don't know. I mean, post traumatic stress or something. I don't fucking know. It never explains it. And she had, in, uh, in the last movie, they kind of hinted that she has like a connection to Michael Myers, like kind of like a psychic thing or something like that. And this film, it's even more in the front. I would have liked to make, uh, in the last film, I, I loved that one, but I would like to have explained it a little bit more. In this one, it's in the forefront completely, and they don't explain it or even try to whatsoever. But uh, it's uh, she's in this clinic, and she's got a friend there named Billy who has like a little crush on her. He's a little kid. Uh, the actor, he does okay. The kid's cute. He's like he's decently likable. He stutters a lot, so he's he's okay. He's much better than the character they would get in this movie. The most awful fucking character in the history of cinema appears in this movie, and she is fucking atrocious. <sighs> Tina, the character of Tina, and she's their Rachel replacement in this movie. Rachel dies, we get Tina. Tina. Fucking horrible, horrible actor. That was not just so much that the actor's not that good, it's just that the character's played up to be so fucking annoying. There's a scene in the movie where she, where, uh, fucking, uh, Jamie is crying her eyes out and wanting Tina to stay with her, and Tina just, just runs off and is like, I'm never sensible if I can help it. I'm like, oh gosh, please die, please. But anyway, you got Don Pleasance back in this one as Loomis. It's kind of he hits the same beats over again, same shit. Him whining about how evil Michael Myers is again. And Loomis in this one is portrayed as like almost fucking insane, pretty much. Uh, I didn't like really like the portrayal of Loomis in this one. I mean, he's like so like he's so crazy in this one that he's borderline insane. But um, Don Pleasance still does a great job acting wise. So Jamie's uh, in this clinic and Rachel and Tina come to visit her all the time, and Jamie can't talk for some reason. Um, they got a dog named Max, who they bring there to see her all the time, which Michael Myers kills, and I'm like, he kills another dog. <laughs> well, you don't even see him kill the dog, but at the end of the movie, you see the dog laying there dead, just like hung with its chain. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Another dog death? I don't mind uh, the killing of animals or whoever in a film. Uh, but, um,. I mean, I'm not one of those people that gets uptight about, like, a death of an animal in a movie or something. But I'm just saying that it feels really just thrown in there just to have it because he's killed dogs over and over or twice in the other two movies. 
So um, there's no reason for it other than that. It's just like there's a Michael Myers checklist. He's like, you gotta use a butcher knife. Uh, <laughs> he's gotta kill a dog. <laughs> but oh, the start of this movie. Uh, one thing I did like, it connects directly with the ending of part four, which I enjoyed. Um, it starts right from the ending of that film where Michael Myers falls down a mine shaft. They try to blow him up with dynamite, but he like makes it to a river and gets washed downstream. And it's pretty funny seeing Michael Myers with his mask and his outfit get fucking like washed downstream. Like, oh, help me. <laughs> he, like, he can't stop in the water and he's just like getting pulled downstream. I thought that was pretty funny. The Michael Myers mask in this film. I haven't mentioned much about how the masks look in each film. First film, the mask looks really good. Second film still looks good, but not as good as it did in the first one. Uh, he's not in Halloween 3, Halloween 4. Uh, the mask looks okay. Not anywhere near as good as the first two films. And this one, dog shit. Utter shit. Fucking worthless ass looking mask. It's like real puffy and puffed out. And it's got like long slick back hair on it. It looks fucking stupid. Uh, but um, Michael Myers gets washed downstream. And he fucking gets found by some hobo living out in the woods. And the hobo just like keeps him there. And it's like one year later. And it's like, ooh. and then Michael Myers wakes up and kills the hobo on Halloween. So it's like, he hib did he hibernate for the entire Halloween and just wake up then on Halloween? Uh, I don't know. I don't get it. Whatever the fuck. And I'm thinking, so this hobo guy just took care of Michael Myers and fed him and shit and everything for the whole year. And never called the police or nothing. That's such a forced in way to bring the character back for the this movie. It's like they didn't even. It seems like they wrote this really quick, like they were just trying to cash in on the last film, and it shows. <laughs> but uh, that was fucking stupid. He kills the old hobo guy. Uh, Jamie can sense it for some reason. For some reason she has like telekinetic abilities with Michael Myers even stronger than the last movie, and uh, or psychic abilities. I mean. And she fucking connects with him. She starts having like a seizure every time Michael, every time Michael Myers gets ready to kill somebody or just is like just casually walking around. <laughs> and Dr. Loomis are running there and Don Pleasant's playing it psychotic. He's like, uh, you gotta help me find him, Jamie. We gotta do this. He's like forcing her to it and she's like crying and everything. <laughs> He's like so over the top insane. It's pretty funny, but at the same time, I don't like what they did with the character. They made him like pretty much cr crazy. Uh, <laughs> kind of get the feeling that he could, he would all, he's a, uh, kind of obsessed with Michael Myers, and if Michael Myers wasn't around, that he he would probably uh, go crazy and start murdering people too, but anyway, um, so he always wants to get Jamie to help him, but for some reason, Jamie won't tell him, like, where he is, and, um, he's like, you, do you ever wonder why he has this power over you, and I'm like, what? I never got the idea, really, that he had power over in the last movie, I guess it's got something to do with that evil connection that they have, or something like that, and it's like, he's, he, uh, Don Pleasance is talking to her, and he's like, he made you stab your mother or whatever. And I'm like, he made her do it. She didn't just go crazy. So, I don't really get that. What the fuck ever. But anyway, uh, back into this uh, shit sandwich here. So, uh, then she starts having like another seizure attack because Michael Myers is fucking around at Rachel's house. And Ellie Cornell is barely in this movie. I mean, it's pretty much almost a cameo. But, uh, uh, they, uh, Dr. Loomis contacts, uh, Rachel, and she, uh, she calls the police. They come there because, um, uh, Danielle Harris is having another schizophrenic seizure, basically. <laughs> Anytime she starts tripping out, uh, Dr. Loomis, uh, pretty much tries to call the National Guard. <laughs> but anyway, she's kind of like the Michael Myers alert system, really. <laughs> but, uh, so the police show up there, and you got these two cops who are, like, goofy comedy relief. I don't mind so much comedy relief if it's done right, but when they, they show up, there's like these dumb fucking cartoon sound effects that play in the background going, like, boop, bop, beep, beep, beep. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? But anyway, it's stupid as hell. I don't know whose choice that was to put that in there. I've heard it was like an homage to Last House on the Left. And I'm like, you're paying tribute to something that everyone hated. No one enjoyed that in Last House on the Left. So that'd be like... <laughs> If in the next Freddy Krueger movie, all they did was pay homage to fucking Freddy's dad. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was stupid. These characters are stupid. They have no reason to be in this fucking movie. Um, <laughs> cartoon sound effects when they show up, and it's fucking, like, annoying as hell. And they, <laughs> It's so stupid. And Well, anyway, they show up. The, everything's okay. Michael Myers didn't kill her right there. They leave. 
Um, but then Makamar shows up uh, a couple of minutes after that, and he fucking stabs her with some scissors, and bam, she's dead. That's it. That's all she amounts to in this movie. That's it. She dies, like, beginning of the first act. That's all she does. And then you get her friend, Tina. Oh, God. Who shows up in the movie, and she fucking doesn't even act like she even gives a shit about Jamie. But uh, she goes to Rachel's house, and she fucking has a friend named Sam, who's this blonde-haired girl, and she has a boyfriend. I don't remember the character's name. I don't give a fuck. He's annoying as shit, too. He works at a store. And then uh, Tina has a boyfriend named Michael, who's an asshole, <laughs> basically. He has a car that he doesn't want anyone to touch, so you get a funny scene where he's actually parked around back of the store because they're getting ready to take some beer out of there. He's parked around back of the store. Fucking Michael Myers takes a rake and scratches the fuck out of his car, and it's kind of like a humorous Michael Myers moment. I actually thought that was pretty funny. Um, and then Michael Myers hits him in the head with the rake, like face first, and that kills him. Decent scene. Uh, the effect for it is is decent. It's an okay kill. Nothing to ride home about. So he's dead. Um, Michael Myers even steals his car. <laughs> and then later on in the movie, he uh, he comes to pick Tina up. As, uh, well, in her boyfriend's car, wearing uh, <laughs> her boyfriend's Halloween mask that she gave him. He goes to pick Tina up. They're riding around. He's, like, fucking with her, which I, I actually like this again, him fucking with people. But, again, it's another, he's pretending to be another woman's boyfriend. I'm just waiting for the scene for one of these movies where he just, like, lets him give him a blowjob. And he, he squeezes one out, and then he just fucking, he's like, I'm done with this killing. I'm going to the porn industry. <laughs> But whatever. Um, so he's fucking with her. She He stops to let her go get a pack of cigarettes. And then you see him switch to his sh the shitty ass looking Michael Myers mask in this movie to put it on. Uh, Jamie's having another psychotic snap uh, seizure. And fucking um, Dr. Loomis is trying to get her to tell him where Michael Myers is at. and where, uh, <laughs> She's like going, big cookie woman. <laughs> it's kind of annoying and silly. But it's okay. I mean, Danielle Harris is acting in this is once again good. She plays a character that can't speak, and you still root for her. I mean, even uh, I mean, even they really punish her even more in this movie. Like Michael Myers chasing after her. she's even in more jeopardy and harsh situations in this one than the, than the last one. So you root for her even more. Danielle Harris is not the problem with this movie. Um, Donald Pleasance does great acting wise again, but um, his character is rote shitty in this film, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But, uh, so back to, back again to this fuckface shit sandwich there. Um, they're, uh, the police show up there at the store. Um, fucking Michael Myers is already gone. Uh, um, they take her to see Jamie, and that's when you get the scene where she's trying to, where now she speaks. She suddenly speaks again. Uh, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, it's not, that's not too big of a deal for me where she can automatically speak again. I guess if it's like, uh, some kind of stress thing or something like that that people get over that uh, at, can, or can get over it at any point in time. I'm not for sure. But, um, so she's over that. She talks now. Um, she try, she like crying and everything, trying to get Tina just to stay there with her, and Tina just blows her off and leaves. I'm like, fuck this dickwad. I mean, who gives a shit what happens to her? But, uh, so she just leaves. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Loomis gets those two fucking asshole cops to follow her again and uh they are to, or gets them two asshole cops back in the fucking movie with their gay ass sound effects um or not gay ass i'm not gonna insult gay people i should say stupid ass sound effects uh but uh so stupid ass sound effect cops i'll just call them dumbass one and dumbass two that sounds pretty good dumbass one and dumbass two so uh dumbass one dumbass two decide to give her a ride to this party that she wants to go to so she doesn't care enough to stay with a little girl who's been traumatized <laughs> for one night just to make her happy but she'll uh fucking go dance at a party and try to get laid okay whatever but um uh, she goes to the party she's dancing around there um her friend sam is there with her fucking annoying boyfriend and uh, they play jokes where they he, he's dressed up like Michael Myers and he, he's pretending like he's gonna try to stab him and shit and uh, the, the, I had the dumbass one and dumbass two jerk their guns out and he takes the mask off and he's like <laughs> and I'm just running around laughing non-stop and so fucking annoying I can't wait till this guy dies as well this movie is such a piece of shit that uh, I don't even bother remembering his character's name 
Like, I do my reviews raw, and sometimes I don't remember characters' names because I've only watched the film once, and I pay more attention to how fun the film is and how the character development and everything plays out. But if a character is really good and likable, I will remember their name or, or maybe look it up before I do the review, regardless of whether I do the review raw or not. But um, this guy, I don't give a fuck what his character's name is. He could be shit stained for all I care, and I still wouldn't give a fuck. But uh, he's running around laughing like that, like a total dumbass. Uh, so they go inside this barn, and him and the, the blonde haired girl Sam decide they want to fuck, basically. Uh, Tina leaves, walks out of there, goes back to the party. Uh, some dudes there are trying to fuck her, wanting her to go skinny dipping. <laughs> uh, and in there, the, he fucking plays another prank on his girlfriend. And I, well, before that, he played a prank on Tina, and then Tina left, and then he plays a prank on his girlfriend. So that's three fucking pranks in a row of a dude dressed up like Michael Myers. I'm like, when's the real Michael Myers going to show up? Because <laughs> I'm missing him. But anyway, so he finally shows up, but he's fucking Sam. He, he gets stabbed to the back with a hay fork, and it like comes out his like chest. And it's kind of an entertaining scene, decent makeup effect. So he's dead, thank God. <laughs> Uh, and then she gets up and fucking takes like a, a Sith and tries to like slice Michael Myers with it, but he grabs it and uses it to cut her with it. And you don't see the kill, there's like blood splattering off screen. But I actually enjoy it still because I'm glad these two characters are dead. Uh, this is kind of like the reverse effect in this film, where normally if you like characters, you don't want to see them die. But in this film, you hate them so bad that when you see them die, you cheer. So I give it points, like a, a star points, just when a character's dead. <laughs> uh, I can't wait till Tina dies. I hope she does. Well, I know she does, but I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just going to be so glad when she, when we get to the point here in this plot summary where she croaks. But anyway, so uh, uh, Jamie and uh, Billy, her, her friend, might as well be her little boyfriend, um, uh, leave the clinic and decide to go look for Tina so she can check on her and make sure she's okay, I guess, or get her out of harm's way. So they head there. They go to the where the party place is. Uh, uh, Fucking Tina discovers the bodies, makes it outside, sees uh, Jamie and Billy there, and fucking Michael Myers is there with a the vehicle. Uh, oh, Michael Myers killed Dumbass 1 and Dumbass 2. Oh, before that, Michael Myers first showed up there at the party, Dumbass 1 and Dumbass 2 were sitting in the vehicle, and you got a funny scene where he drives by, and one of the cops goes, Do you, well, Dumbass 1 goes, then we should check that out, and Dumbass 2 goes, I don't know, that looked like a life-threatening situation to you. <laughs> I actually thought that was kind of funny, but uh, still, I hate these characters. I hate them. Um... So, dumbass one, dumbass two are dead. Uh, then fucking Michael Myers starts trying to run down Tina, and they all run into this field. And then he tries to, like, run down Billy, and Billy dodges out of the way. So, again, it's like putting kids in uh, harm's way. So, this film has a little bit of balls, even though it still sucks. I don't care how bold you are with who you're willing to kill in a movie. <laughs> if the story is utter dog shit, I don't even give a fuck about anybody besides Jamie. Uh, even Donald Pleasance, I don't really care too much for him in this one. But, uh, he decides to try to run Jamie down. Jamie jumps out of the way. He fucking hits a tree, uh, gets knocked out. He gets out of there. Uh, fucking Tina comes there and he, uh, she jumps in the way to save Jamie. He stabs the fuck out of Tina in the shoulder, which I'm thinking, good, uh, I'm so glad that she's fucking dead. But, uh, I wished it would have been more brutal. But, uh, she's dead. I actually heard this actress was fucking the director at the time, and that's how she got the role. I would not be surprised, would not be surprised that she was fucking the director, and he decided to write out Rachel's character so she could get a bigger part. But anyway, or so she could become, like, the main, uh, older, uh, <laughs> uh, sidekick to Jamie instead of Rachel, like in the last film. And if that's the truth, to be honest, I w if, I find if I ever found out that that was true, I would hate this director. I mean, honestly, even more than what I do right now because this film's utter shit. But, um, so, um, uh, after that, after Tina's dead, thank goodness, uh, Dr. Loomis shows up, nabs Jamie, and he's talking about how he can help, uh, help her kill Michael Myers, or he thinks he can. And, uh, they, everybody leaves. The sheriff, the same sheriff from the last film is in this one. Um, so, uh, they all leave. And Dr. Loomis sitting there talking to Michael Myers, talking about him needs to go home and how he's got this rage inside him and how it's destroying him too. So it kind of adds to the fact that Michael Myers is like had this evil build up in him. Kind of like they, kind of like Loomis explains a little bit in the first film how he had this evil build up in him, uh, and to the point where it just grew till it contaminated his entire soul and there's nothing human left in him. 
But in the second film, you kind of get like a little hesitation uh, scene with Michael Myers. So kind of like his humanity comes back for like one second, um, which is interesting. That he, I, that's kind of interesting for a character. I really like that. that. That's a character who has like no humanity left. That's the evil has contaminated every part of his being. And, uh, but a little hesitation, humanity like that showing is fine. But uh, the humanity showing we get in this film from Michael Myers is horrible. But I'll get to that. He tells him to go to his original house. And the house, the Myers house in this one is fucking huge. It's way bigger than it was in the, from it looked in the first film, the original from the beginning of that one. The, the Myers house is humongous in this film. So, uh, they're all at the Myers house. Uh, Sheriff Meeker is there. I believe, I believe that's the character's name, uh, Meeker, um, or Ben Meeker. He's there. Um, Michael Myers is uh, fucking, he makes a scene at a clinic, so all the police have to leave and go to the clinic. Uh, you see Jamie having like a seizure, thinking something bad's going to happen to Billy, but you never find out if Billy died or not, or if Michael Myers killed him or what. I don't think he did. I think that he just like started coming over there to the clinic for a distraction, so people would just leave. But you never know who, how many how many people he killed there at the clinic. But whatever. So uh, all the police leave, including the sheriff. Uh, and then uh, uh, Donald Pleasance knows that Michael Myers is coming there. And instead of just leaving and getting everybody out of there, he decides to use the little girl as bait. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean. In the other films, Donald Pleasant's character, Loomis, was a little unhinged, but uh, he would never, I don't, he never seemed like he'd resort to using the actual person as bait to get Michael Myers, or to kill him. It's like he's so fixated on him, he's willing to do anything to get him. I'm, I'm almost surprised that he didn't resort to, like, shooting her in the leg and wounding her like an animal to attract Michael Myers. But, um, so I thought that was, like, way too extreme for the character and made him seem a little bit unlikable. But, um, so Michael Myers comes there. Uh, there's one cop in there in the house. Uh, Michael Myers manages to make it in. Dr. Loomis is there, and he's like, the little girl will take the rage away, Michael. I know that's what you wanted to do or something like that. And I'm like, so his plan is just like to talk Michael Myers down when he got there and take his knife? <laughs> or, I don't, I'm not for sure. Uh, Michael Myers starts to give him his knife. Like, you get another, like, his humanity. You get another, like, a little humanity breaking back in scene here. I guess it could be that, or maybe Michael Myers is just fucking with him. And uh, he slices Dr. Loomis, throws him out of the way. Of course, he's not dead. He never dies. He's immortal, I tell you. <laughs> Might as well be. But, um, so, uh, he slices Dr. Loomis. And this whole thing about the little girl taking the rage away out of him or taking this, taking his evil out of him, I, I like more development on that. That's interesting that the character of Michael Myers might think that, uh, this little girl, his, uh, niece could somehow make him better. And um, but uh, you don't really get any kind of like development with it or anything, so it's kind of strangely thrown in. It leaves me with a WTF what the fuck moment where I don't really get it at all. So uh, Michael Myers heads upstairs to try to kill the little girl. The cop shoots him a couple times. He hangs the cop outside the window. The cop's dead. Uh, it's okay scene. You know, it's not really like anything amazing. Um, so the cop's dead from a little hanging. Uh, she manages to get out of there. She gets in like this little shaft she's crawling up it and michael myers is fucking stabbing his knife through the shaft trying to stab her and she's like stepping on the blade knife blade and everything he's getting like really close to hacking her so again i like the fact that they're putting her really in jeopardy and it makes me really feel sorry for this little girl more than anybody in this film she manages to make it out of there he's still chasing after her. she gets upstairs that's where you get the dead dog hung by its chain i'm like you don't need that again you don't but um you got rachel in there dead which makes me uh even more pissed off at this movie. So Rachel's dead. Uh, fucking Michael Myers manages to show up there. Jamie's hiding in a coffin. Michael Myers is getting ready to stab her. And she's like, Uncle, Boogeyman, let me see your face. And he like he takes off his mask. And she's like, you're just like me. And he's fucking crying. And I'm like, what? He's crying? You got a character here. Okay, that's supposed to be pure evil. Pure evil in essence. With only little signs of humanity that creep out every now and then. But uh, his his evil is so contaminated in his body, his being, that he can't, his humanity can't fully come out. But you get to the point here where he's crying, makes the character, you can't have a character who's the boogeyman, who's supposed to be pure evil, and then have him crying to the point, you go that far, that's like you're trying to make us sympathize with him, and if you're willing to go as far as to show him cry, and his face isn't even burnt, like it should be after the second film, but uh, I mean, you see his face pretty damn clearly. But, um, 
he's crying, you see a tear come straight down his face, you're like, what the fuck, why are they trying to make us sympathize with Michael Myers, this guy's supposed to be pure evil, completely contaminated by evil, with only small signs of humanity creeping out, uh, just because they managed to, 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 you know, fucking make it out of him, but, um, you get to the point where he's crying and everything, it just demeans the character and makes him sympathetic, it's like, if he's not in control of his actions, and he's not even, I mean, can we really even hold him responsible if he's just like, I mean, I mean, you can hold him responsible for all the stuff he's done, obviously, but when you get to the point where he's showing a tear, if that tries to make, that makes you almost feel sympathy for him, and you don't need that for a character that's supposed to be pure evil, you don't, because if he's crying and stuff, I'm sorry, the character's not pure evil, because a pure evil person or human being would not be crying, um, but, uh, and would, would not give a shit about knifing a little girl and would not hesitate. But, um, anyway, you get him crying, which is too much, too, just too fucking much humanity showing there. Uh, but, uh, she manages to get out of there. She's making it downstairs. Dr. Loomis has got her, and he's like, let's play catch the little girl, Michael. <laughs> I'm like, again, what the fuck? He's going all out. <laughs> this guy is, like, oh, just as crazy as Michael Myers almost at this point. He's fucking, uh, holding her there, like, trying to get, uh, trying to draw him near, and he slings her out of the way. He drops a net, like a chain net, on top of Michael Myers and fucking shoots him with tranquilizer darts and starts beating him with a board and saying, Michael, die, 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 <laughs> which I actually thought was kind of entertaining. Uh, I don't like the way Loomis is portrayed in this movie, <clears throat> but um, this scene with him beating the fuck out of Michael Myers with a plank is okay, piece of wood. So Michael Myers just basically gets knocked out and Dr. Loomis just falls over. So I'm not sure what you're supposed to think happened to, to Dr. Loomis here, whether he's dead or he just passes out, which I know he's not dead because he's in the next one. So uh, I'm not sure what they wanted you to think at the time or whether they thought whether or not they were going to bring him back for the next one. But uh, I'm actually glad they did because I'd rather him uh, go out in a different way than he does here. Although I don't know how he goes out in the next film uh, because it's been a long time since I've seen it. But anyway, he just passes out on top of Michael Myers. Uh... Then you get a scene after that where they got fucking Michael Myers in jail, and he's still got his mask on, which is ridiculous. They would not let him keep his mask on and him in a fucking jail cell. But whatever. <laughs> um, that's fucking stupid. And then you got all through this movie, you got like this guy who's like wearing a black outfit with like boots on or something like that. Um, and he just wanders around the movie, like follow, randomly following uh, Dr. Loomis, and you're thinking, who the fuck is this guy? And it never explains it whatsoever. Sets him up to be explained in the next movie. Um, uh, at the end of the movie, they got, they got, uh, Michael Myers, uh, held prisoner in the cell, uh, Jamie's took outside into the police car, and this guy just goes into the police station, kills every single cop in the entire police station, single-handedly, by himself, every single cop, so I'm thinking, what the, how the fuck did he do that, how did he, how did one guy kill the entire police station, now keep in mind, this guy ain't like Michael Myers, he's human, so how the fuck did he kill every single cop in the police station, single-handedly, <laughs> that's a little hard to swallow, <laughs> And obviously, you know, Michael Myers has gotten out. I mean, obviously, you know, he's gotten away again. So, it's like same old shit. But it's interesting, though, because it leaves you with a cliffhanger. Because Jamie walks back in, finds all the dead cops, and sees where my, uh, the fucking, where the bars have been blown apart. Michael Myers has made it out. And she starts going, no! And it just cuts off, and then bam, you get that little Michael Myers jingle. <laughs> Which, that kind of, it's kind of interesting to me. It leaves it on a cliffhanger like that. I actually like that a little bit. Because it leaves, like, you know, a setup for the next movie and more to be desired. And kind of leaves you, like, you know, a little thirsty for wanting to know more about who the fuck this man in black guy is. But, uh, <laughs> this movie still sucks. One and a half star. Uh, the franchise has become predictable and stale at this point. Michael Myers just popping up in shadows and stuff like that in the background is not that interesting anymore. Because it's been done, uh, three times already. And this being the fifth time and him doing it again and doing it to stock uninteresting characters and characters that are annoying like Tina. Um, it just make the franchise dull and stale. Uh, every franchise, horror franchise or long running franchise has a movie like this where they get to a point where they just get stale or dull because they're just not really, they're forcing a story out with the character, uh, forcing him back when he doesn't really need to be back. Uh, and plus because they pussied out on the story they already had set up from the last movie instead forced Michael Myers back in and it can it shows that he's been forced in and it comes off really fucking stupid but um 
Um, so, yeah, I hate this movie. This movie sucks. I'll probably never watch it again unless I'm doing another marathon, and even then, I'll have to power through it because the character of Tina is so fucking annoying that I just, I, I can't handle it. I can't. Unless I power through it while I'm watching this movie with friends to laugh at just how horrible the character of Tina is and how much we're rooting for her to die. Like, laugh at her death scene anyway. But, uh, Michael Myers looks like shit in this movie. His mask looks like other shit. Um... Uh, this movie, complete dog shit. Uh, Donald Pleasance does good acting as Dr. Loomis, but the character is completely insane here, almost. So he's not really, can't really root for him as much. Um, Daniel Harris does great as Jamie. To be honest, I liked her better than anyone in the film. I rooted for her more than anybody. Uh, which is weird, because Donald Pleasance's character is my favorite character, but in this film, they just make him so psychotic, or crazy, uh, that I just didn't like him. And uh, her character becomes... Uh, inadvertently becomes the most sympathetic and the most likable because of that for me. And also because her performance is just really good and she had more to chew on than just Don Pleasant doing the same thing as playing a crazy guy. <laughs> this film felt feels really rushed, but obviously that they're trying to capitalize on the success of the last one. Uh, and it shows this film is utter shit. I don't ever want to see another film directed by this same director whose name I can barely pronounce. Um, Dominic Arthur Neenan jackass or something like that but anyway um this film is utter shit avoid it at all costs i'll see you guys again with halloween 6 the curse of michael myers which i remember being at least better than this film which <laughs> i will enjoy um which i'll at least enjoy it more than this film and to be honest that's a that's at least that's a breath of fresh air for me right there if it's better than this one um but yeah, this film sucks. Uh, one and a half stars of a possible four. Dog shit. I'll see you guys again with another review. And whatever you do, do not watch this on Halloween or on Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever. Uh, no holiday whatsoever or any day if you can. <laughs> I'll see you guys again with the next review. And I hope you have a uh, hope you have a good day.